Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. Today we're going to talk about some possible resources that can accompany your Come Follow Me reading for October 23rd through 29th, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. And the first one is called Prophetic Use of the Pauline Epistles, 1970 to 2013. It's by a collection of authors, Brad Farnsworth, John Hilton, Jacqueline Nielsen, and Jonathan Ogden. Brad Farnsworth is a retired faculty member from the Religion Department at BYU. John Hilton is an Ancient Scripture faculty member currently at BYU. And the other two were students at BYU. And the purpose of this paper is simply to examine how members of the First Presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve have used the writings of Paul between 1970 and 2013. And so basically, apostles using Paul's words. And specifically, you know, looking at what are the most frequently cited Pauline passages and then identify how they've been utilized. So they have very helpful charts that list uh, which passages are referred to and quoted often in general conference. And then they also look at the top 10 most frequently quoted Pauline passages. Again, part of it is just to identify the passages themselves, but also look at the doctrine behind them, whether it's gratitude or apostasy or um, preparation for the second coming, etc. One of the points they make is that canonized scripture has been and will continue to be a major source for validating doctrine taught to the saints. And so they should be used in our classrooms as well, and I would say also in our homes. And so we believe that the words of Paul, similar to those of other ancient prophets, were meant not only for those in his time, but also for us in the latter days. Through teaching eternal truths in his epistles, Paul reached out to future generations while instructing early Christians. Perhaps Paul offered these truths to prepare Latter-day Saints for the prophesied second coming of the Son of God. Paul's perspective transcends the major dispensations of mortality, as well as the veil between mortality and life after death. The second article is called A Pattern of Integrity, Agency, Order, and Obedience. It's by Val Hawks, who is a professor in manufacturing technology at BYU, and comes from a volume published by the RSC entitled Moral Foundations, Standing Firm in a World of Shifting Values. In this article, as the title points out, he looks at, for a pattern. Uh, he quotes from Doctrine and Covenants section 52 that the Lord has provided a pattern in all things. And these patterns are to keep us from being deceived and to keep the church pure. The Lord's pattern gives us a model of what we should become, a measure by which we can know if we're meeting his standard, and a process to become like him. And so in the pattern of integrity, he talks about three fundamental gospel principles, agency, order, and obedience. And these principles combine in such a way as to describe a pattern that, when used correctly, results in lives of integrity and Christ-like character. So the article will proceed to talk about these principles, agency, order, and obedience, and then uses different stories and illustrations, life experiences of various people that demonstrated when they properly showed agency, order, and obedience. And so besides going into these uh, different elements, he also talks about how we can develop a pattern of integrity. We can learn and read about it, such as in classwork. We can avoid little white lies and drifting in our honesty and integrity. And then, you know, how we can develop a proper home environment where these principles can be fostered. Uh, and then he makes a point, he says, there's an interesting contradiction in the ideas of agency, order, and obedience. It is this. Agency means we do have a choice and an unwavering commitment to order means we strive to know God's will in all we do. Obedience means we submit our will to his in all we do, just as Christ did. Thus, it may seem to some that we have no choice. I'm sure you already see and feel the difference. The difference is, if we succumb to external pressures, such as a situation, money, peer pressure, or fear of possible consequence, we've surrendered our choice to these conditions and thus feel it was taken from us. We also feel frustrated, powerless, angry, and depressed. When we obey, we do so voluntarily, surrendering our will to the will of the Father because we choose to. Carl G. Mazur's staying inside the chalk circle demonstrates his deep internal commitment to keep his word, not because an external force made him do so. 
He is not bound from without. He is covenanted from within. He is not powerless through fear. He is full of power through faith and obedience. The pattern of integrity is knowing the freedom and power agency offers us when used correctly, striving constantly to know the will of God and choosing each day to obey in actions, small and large.